Hey guys, welcome to my Barrow Trauma tutorial. Um, in this tutorial, we will be discussing state machines, digital logic, and a use case for it for them. So, say you wanted to have a full uh, view field of view around your submarine. Uh, what you can do with that, what you can do is you can put uh, searchlights around them. But usually what you do is you hook them all up into one single periscope. That's not going to, uh, so you hook them, if you try to hook them all up into one single periscope, you're just going to see through all of them. Um, you're going to be controlling all of the searchlights. And you don't want that. You want to be able to see one searchlight at a time. Usually how you would do that is that you would have four different periscopes, each hooked up to a single periscope. Um, here I'm just going to show you what would happen if we ha had them all hooked up to the same um, periscope. So as you can see, all four searchlights are moving at the same time. So you don't want this. This is where a state machine would come in and I'm just going to show you what one would look like in use. So this is a custom sub I built. Um, and it implements one of those state machines. I have it all hanging around here. And this is a periscope it's all connected to. So I also have searchlights on four corners of the ship. I'm just going to go ahead and turn on the battery here. So as you can see, uh, the top right searchlight is currently being selected. And as you can see, there's another searchlight light right here. It's not moving. Now I can change to a different one. And then change to a different one. So this is going to be the bottom left. And then change to another one. The top left one. So that's one potential use case. I will be showing you how to implement this later. Uh, so before I get started showing you guys what I will be doing and how to implement this in Barrow Trauma, um, I will be discussing a little bit about the theory behind it and some of the notation I'll be using. Um, so I'm going to be discussing discrete mathematics and digital logic. If you already have an understanding of that, you can go ahead and just skip to the next section. If you don't, and you do want to learn, then stick around. Alright, if you're still here, then uh, let's get started. So, in discrete mathematics, you also, it has its basis in logic statements. So, you're basically asking, is this and this a true statement? So, uh, as an example, you have and and or. So, you have to, as an example, you can say, um, it is going to rain today and the, my cat is wet. Now, if, it's, if it was going to rain today, and my cat was also wet, then that's a true statement. I could also say, it is going to rain today, or my cat is wet. Now, my cat could not be wet, and then it rains, but that would still be a true statement. Um, so that's just like a little example off the top of my head. Um, so to translate that into actual symbols, we have the AND statement. So the dot represents an AND. AND. And what this is shown as on a digital circuit is an AND gate, which is A, B, C. So there's two inputs, A and B, and an output C. Uh, we also have an OR gate, so OR, A, B, two inputs A, B, and an output C. Uh, we can also have some modifiers. So like if we say A, then that's just saying not. So this little flat bar on top is not. There's a couple of different ways you can also show that. Uh, another way you could do it is also say A, not, which is an exclamation mark in the front of it. And what this basically means is just you have an A and then an inverter, then an output A not. And what basically this means is that if A is false, then make it true. It's just inverting it. And with these, you can all you can just make these into different logic statements. So you have uh, as example A 
and B or C. And then on, uh, at the same time, you can also not this entire thing. So what this would look like in uh, using these digital logic symbols would be say A and B or C and then pass through an inverter. So A, B, C, the output of the AND goes into here and then it's inverted out. So there's a lot of different combinations you can do with this and they all translate very well into barrel trauma because barrel trauma has AND gates, NOT gates, XOR gates, anything you want to use. Anything you want to do, you can do it. I've seen people make an entire computer out of it. It's basically the red. It's basically redstone in Minecraft. If you, if you've seen a bunch of the computers in there. Um. Anyways, so this is just about it for the notation. At least what's relevant to the uh, application we're going for. So let me explain what a truth table is. A truth table is just one way we can show how, well, how. If an inputs are in a certain order, what are the outputs going to be? So for an AND gate, we have A, B, and an output C, just as I showed you from the last section. Now the truth table would probably look something like this. We have A, B on one side, and then C. So and then we're just counting it from in binary. Uh, just in case you don't know how binary works. <clears throat> uh, just a little quick thing on binary. So, zero, zero. So, binary can be represented as either a zero or a one. And these can be chained together in. You can have multiple bits together to represent larger numbers. So, zero, one is equal to one. One, zero is equal to 2. So it goes something like this. So 0, 1 plus 0, 1 is equal to 1 plus 1 in binary equals 0. And then you would carry the 1 and then just be 1. So um, it's just a different math system. In here, you're basically just counting up in binary. So 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. And so this is going to be the truth table for the AND gate, because A and B, when they're both 1, then C is also 1. Conversely, we have the OR gate. So same deal in this case. Let's just call it C. At when A and B are both at 0, then it's 0. But if A or B are 1, then the statement is now true. So that's just basically how truth tables work, right? So now we're going to be talking about the state machine. So in essence, the state machine has its states, and then you have your next state. Apologies for my poor handwriting. So next state. <laughs> Coder, and then just a state coder. And then what the states do are they just keep track of what, um, what basically what setting you're on and what stage you're at. So these are free inputs into both of these. The next state decoder determines what the next state is going to be based on what state we're at right now and any additional out, um, outside inputs. And then the state decoder takes the state and determines what the outputs are going to be. In terms of how we're going to implement this in Barrow Trauma, um, so we're the states are going to be essentially two D flip-flops. Flip-flops are kind of the basic building blocks of memory in a digital circuit. So you have an input D and then just an out, just called Q. And then a clock.
so both these clocks can be hooked up to the same signal. And what the clock does is basically tell it, when should I change my state? When should I change what I'm holding inside this D flip-flop? When should I change my output? Um, so what the D flip-flop does is that on every clock si uh, signal, so every rising edge, a clock signal in um, digital logic is basically just looks like this. You have um, a certain frequency where it goes up and it goes down, up and down, up and down. And say, so um, you could have something on a falling edge or you could have something on a rising edge. Typically what you would see is something that uh, latches on a rising edge. So what's this basically saying is on every right, what a D flip plot does is that on every rising edge, save whatever signal you see on D. So if I have an output one and it's on a rising edge, then um, the Q is now going to output one. Now, if I change this to zero, it doesn't matter if I change zero, uh, the D or not. As long as the clock has not met a rising edge, seen a rising edge, it's not going to change. It's always going to be outputting one. So in theory, or not in theory, in practice, you could just save one forever as long as you save that one forever as long as you don't have another rising edge. Um, so that's just how the states are going to be represented. OK, so now we'll get into the decoder or I mean the state decoder. So let me introduce you something called a MUX. So what does a MUX do? Let's say you have four inputs, A, B, C, D, and then you have an output Q. So you have four bits coming in, one bit. What you want to use a MUX for is if you ha want to select between four signals, which one to output. So typically within a MUX, you would have, well, not typically, what a MUX also has is a select si some signal. Um, two, it's going to be two bits because we have four inputs, four discrete inputs. And what we want to do is we want to select between these. So if we have select zero, zero, then it's going to output A. If it's going to be zero, one, then it's going to output B. It's going to output C. Uh, if you want to output C, then the select will be one, zero. And if you want to output D, so simple as that. Um, now, in terms of what our periscope is, uh, or our search slice want to do, we have basically one periscope, and we want to collect those, connect those to four search lights. So it's actually going to be, going to be the opposite of the multiplexer um, mux multi. So it's going to be the opposite of the multiplexer, and it's actually going to be something called a dmux. So in this case, we have an input Q and then four outputs A, B, C, D. And then so we want to choose which signal to output, uh, which output we want to send Q out to. So it's the same concept. So uh, let's move this down a little bit, select. And then so zero, zero, if select was zero, zero, then output A would be whatever Q is, zero, one, then output B would, would be whatever Q is, one, zero, C, and then so on. So that's what our state decoder is going to be. Um, so as for our next state decoder, it's also pretty simple. It's quite literally just a counter. Okay, so this is basically our building blocks of our state machine that we will be making today. Now, you might be wondering, how am I supposed to do this? There's no component in Barotrauma that has a, that's a multiplexer or a demultiplexer. There's definitely not one that's a counter, or there's not one that's a, that are flip-flops. Uh, 
Well, let's go into how to create a, uh, a counter first. So our, we're going to start with our next state decoder first. So as a side note, uh, in binary representation of numbers, you have you can have a certain number of bits. So each bit can either be a zero or a one. That means each bit can have two possible states, meaning two discrete values. So two to the one, two meaning how many state, how many um, discrete values each bit can have, and then this exponent one, meaning how many bits you have, can tell you how many states or how high you can count essentially. So if you have something, a number with two bits, then you would have two to the two equals four. And just to show you, you have zero, one. Oops, sorry. Just to show you, you have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. These are four different representations from two bits. If you expand that to 2 to the 3, then you'll have 8, So and so on. Anyways, so let's talk about how to implement a counter. So you have two states. Let's call that state bit 1, state bit 0. And then you want to have the next states so represented with an apostrophe. So 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Now, this is a simplified state uh, next state decoder. You might have this next state decoder which has an output outside input like A. And so the next state can also be determined off of A. Um, that would also make the state uh, decoder much more complicated because now you have to have eight possible um, outputs essentially. So for this, in this case, all we want to ha is to have the state count up to the next stage. So the next state is going to be zero one. Then we have uh, it's just going to go up to one zero one one, and then once it gets to one one then we'll just roll back down to zero. That's how an overflow works. If you're one if you've heard that term before, that's basically what's happening in an overflow. A bit is going over to and it can't count that high, so it just counts back to zero. Okay, so cool. Now we have our next state truth table. How do we translate this into an actual circuit? We have two options. We've got POS, which stands for product of sums and then SOP which means sum of products and these get their names because if you'll remember sum is just a plus sign and then product is also another term for multiplication which is an and sign so I'm gonna do this both ways product of sums and sum of products whether, whether or not you use one or the other it depends on how much you want to simplify your circuit. In this case, it really doesn't matter which one you use. It's going to have the same amount of outcomes either way. More complicated circuits, you can use either technique to simplify it. You can also do something called Carnot mappings. Oops, sorry. K-map, or shorthand for Carnot mapping. And this, that's also used to simplify these logic circuits. In this case, we definitely don't need a K-map. Right, so how do I do a product of sums? So we're going to start with one potential output, the S1 bit. And so product of sums is basically asking, when is the output 0? So as you can see, S1 and S0, when they're both 0, then we have 0 on S1. And here, when they're both 1, it's also 0. So what we, what we can do is we can say S1 or S0 and S1 not or S0 not 
is equal to S1 naught. Um, and then we also, so, so this is product of sums, and then we have sum of products, which is asking when is it 1. So S1 naught and S0 or S1 and S0 not. Now, in case you guys didn't notice, doesn't this look like an XOR gate or the output of an XOR? So that means that an XOR is just a combination, it actually, can actually be expanded into this. Um, in, which, in any case, we already have an XOR gate, so this entire circuit can just be simplified, or uh, not entire circuit, so this entire section of the truth table can be simplified into S1, XOR, S0. Now, you also have the S0 bit, and how do we translate that? Well, I'm just going to do some of products for this one. Uh, over here. So sum of products, let me just delete this. So sum of products, we got S1 and S0. Or S1 and S0 not. Is equal to S0 not. Uh, I mean S0, the next S0. Um, so, yeah, cool. We got that. There's a way to simplify this. So we don't have to have so many. So we can actually simplify this. Uh, a little bit to make it easier. So this is actually um, a distributed property, so we can actually take out the S0 naught, and what we're left with is S1 naught or S1. Now, this is also a property, so S1 naught or S1 is going to reduce down to always being true. Uh, I'll let you think about that. So, and then we have S, so we're just left with uh, basically S0 naught and one, or true. This is also another property, because if you think about it, if either one is zero, or, I mean, if this uh, resolves, resolves into zero, then it's not going to matter what that one is. It's just going to be zero. So this is basically, this basically just doesn't matter. So S0 not is what simplifies down into. So the entire, so this entire section can actually, can actually be simplified into S1, no, or S0 is equal to S0 not. So that's going to be, so this set of equations is going to represent our next state decoder. Okay, so our next state decoder is da done. How about our actual state decoder, our demultiplexer? How do we put that into a logic circuit? Um, so it's going to actually be the same process. So, we got Q, S1, select one, or select, actually the select in this case can actually be represented as our state bits. So, select, now the Q itself actually does not matter. And then here's our outputs. So, S1, S0. Uh, let's just say, let's just make the default, uh, actually, 
for doing it like this. D, C, E, A. So we have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Uh, the x's in this case just mean don't cares. Don't cares in a truth table means they don't have bearing or they don't change anything within this particular aspect of the outputs or yeah. So zero zero, let's have that output be a and the rest be zero. Q and so on. Same deal. C and D. Okay, cool. So now how do we, how does this turn into what our circuit's gonna be? Well, we can also represent that D multiplexer as just a bunch of switches, right? And there's where Q comes in. So Q just splits off into these. Just have A, B, C, D. And so what does the, what component does this look like? Relays in Barotrauma. In real life, this would be probably be MOSFETs or something, but let's not talk about those. Um, so relays. So we could just choose which one we want to output. So in this case, what happens then is that it's just one, 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 right? Because when state one is state zero, um, and when when a state is zero, then A, that switch is going to be on and all others are off. So applying the same technique as I discussed in the next state decoder, we got S1, S0, or let's look for, oh, so yeah, in this case, we could be more efficient if we chose to do sum of product rather than product of sums. Because if you look at each of these um, columns, there's only one place where, the, uh, where we're looking for a ones output. So A, it's going to equal to S1 and S0 not. B is going to be equal to S1 not and S0. C is going to be equal to S1 and S0 not. And then D is going to be equal to S1 and S0. So that's going to be our um, state decoder. I just realized I didn't talk ab talk about what an XOR was. Uh, this is what an XOR looks like. So what an XOR does is that if either A or B are different, then the output C is going to be a one. If they're both the same, so like zero, zero, or one, one, the C will equal zero. Um, so that's just a quick rundown of XOR gate, just in case you were confused from a previous section when I was talking about them. I apologize for that. Uh, so let's just draw all of that out into some sort of circuit. Uh, so we have our next state decoder up here. So let's just get the not gate. And then we have our uh, actual state decoders. So and, sorry, let's get the and. Not, not, not. That's a really ugly looking and gate. Right. So this is all, let's call this one S1, S0. So this is all gonna be essentially connected to each other.
Right. So that may, I hope that gives you a rundown of basically how we're going to implement this circuit in the submarine itself. Oh, sorry. Hang on. One more thing. This one. This zero. So, yep. That's basically exa essentially what our circuit's going to look like. The D flip flop uh, by itself is not represented as any logic gates. It, it can be broken down into latches, but that's not within the scope of this video. Okay, so you might be wondering how we how do we get a clock pulse in Barotrauma? Well, that's pretty easy. All we need is a button and an OR gate. Uh, set the OR gate to output zero when false. And just hook up the signal from the button into something here. And so now we can set up our memory components. So we're going to need two memory components and then a relay uh, or two relays. And then we're going to set this OR to the set states of these relays. Make sure these are off by default. Give the memory a default value of zero. And then following the circuit from the last section, we have one XOR gate and then a NOT component. We have four AND gates. And then we have four relays. And these four relays have the signal of the position out from the periscope itself. Uh, these white lines, these white wires are just hooked up to, to the light components to show you which ones are pointing to which. So we have four end gates. Uh, let me just space these out a little bit more to make them easier to see. And then we're just going to need a knot component here, 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 here. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and hook these up really quick. Hook up the memory components. Um, so in this case, we're actually not going to have enough uh, wiring space to be able to fit up all of these components to each other. Each, in case you didn't know, each of these outputs or inputs can only have five wires connected to each. So in order to extend that, we're going to need more relays. So we're, I'm just going to go ahead and add these here. Have this output here. And so these ones can just remain on since we're always going to need these signals. I'm going to have state one be represented by a green wire. And then state two, an orange wire. Right. And then just have these outputs hooked up to the set state of these relays. So the outputs for the AND gates to the set states of these relays. And I'm going to go ahead and have these. here. So that's going to be state one to the XOR gate. Uh, let's make this a white wire. Uh, 
have these ones. Let's move back around. Uh, hook these up to these memory components. Right, and make sure that these are off by default. The false outputs of all of these logic components, we should make sure that are, are set to zero. Okay, and so now we can go ahead and test this out. Oop. Hold up, a little uh, <laughs> technical difficulty here. Right, there we go. And so now you can see that we can switch between the different lights. <laughs> More technical difficulties. Okay. So now you can see we're starting from the bottom left. We're controlling the bottom left. We go up to the top right. Top right. And the bottom left. So that's how you implement this circuit in Barotrauma. I uh, hope this helped. Thank you for watching.